Breaking news tonight. Former President Donald Trump pleads not guilty to charges he illegally conspired to overturn the 2020 election. Mr. Trump in a federal courtroom in Washington just steps from the Capitol, where his supporters rioted on January 6th. The former president facing his third arraignment, charged with a criminal scheme to stay in power after his loss. Special counsel Jack Smith just feet away from him in the courtroom before leaving Washington. Mr. Trump, who is running to retake the White House in 2024, coming before the cameras, calling it a very sad day for America. Our team at the courthouse and our legal analysts standing by. This is NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Good evening and welcome. It was a moment surely seen through different lenses in this divided nation and yet a moment of undeniable consequence. A former American president standing before a federal judge to answer whether he sought to thwart the will of voters and block a bedrock of American democracy, the peaceful transfer of power. In a 27 minute long arraignment, former President Trump pleaded not guilty to four charges of conspiracy and obstruction. His third criminal arraignment in four months and arguably the most serious. Afterward, Mr. Trump slamming the indictment as politically motivated, a persecution of a political opponent. The ex-president flying from his New Jersey home to Washington and a courtroom not far from the White House and the U.S. Capitol, where some of his supporters rioted on January 6th. Defiant and undeterred, Donald Trump pressing forward with his presidential campaign as he gathers political strength from what some consider a moment of political disgrace. NBC's Garrett Hake was in the courtroom for the arraignment. Garrett, another stunning moment in American history that's starting to feel routine. That's right, Lester. For the third time in four months, the former president appearing before a judge to plead not guilty to multiple felonies. It was a remarkable scene. The special counsel who accuses him of trying to steal an election sitting just a few feet away. The special counsel, Jack Smith, watching Mr. Trump throughout the hearing. The former president turned criminal defendant, never appearing to return his gaze. Once again, a former American president is a criminal defendant in court. Donald Trump leaving his Bedminster Golf Club in New Jersey in a motorcade to the airport for the flight to Washington posting, it is a great honor because I'm being arrested for you. After arriving, vehicles winding through downtown D.C. to the federal courthouse in the shadow of the U.S. Capitol, where the conspiracy he is alleged to have led concluded with the deadly January 6th riot. The Republican frontrunner tonight pleading not guilty to four federal charges, all related to what prosecutors say was a criminal scheme to cling to power after losing the 2020 election. He was processed and fingerprinted, but no mug shot taken. Inside the courtroom, Mr. Trump and his attorneys roughly 15 feet away from special counsel Jack Smith. Prosecutors not objecting to Mr. Trump's release. The judge reading out conditions, including not talking to witnesses about the case. In an overflow room, two Capitol Police officers and a D.C. officer who were there on January 6th. With personal aide and co-defendant in the classified documents case Walt Nauta nearby, Mr. Trump slamming the new charges. This is a very sad day for America. This is a persecution of a political opponent. This was never supposed to happen in America. This is the persecution of the person that's leading by very, very substantial numbers in the Republican primary and leading Biden by a lot. So if you can't beat him, you persecute him or you prosecute him. This is the third arraignment for Mr. Trump in four months and the most serious of the indictments he faces, with charges including conspiracy to defraud the U.S. and the rights of voters. Prosecutors alleging Mr. Trump first tried to pressure state officials to change election results, then allegedly asked his vice president, who refused, later summoning supporters on the 6th, though the indictment does not accuse Mr. Trump of inciting the riot. The Republican frontrunner arguing the case is designed to force him to spend large amounts of time and money to defend himself, instead of focusing on his 2024 campaign. Trump allies blasting what they call a partisan DOJ. When it comes to Donald Trump, there are no rules. Destroy him, destroy his family. When it comes to Hunter Biden and Joe Biden, they get away with almost everything. The former president's defense likely to include an argument that his false claims about a stolen election were constitutionally protected free speech. An argument dismissed by his former attorney general turned fierce critic Bill Barr. No, I really don't think that's a valid argument. Free speech doesn't give you the right to engage in a fraudulent conspiracy. So, Garrett, where does this case go from here? Well, Lester, the judge set the next hearing for August 28th, although Mr. Trump does not have to attend. The prosecution will likely push for a speedy trial date. The Trump defense lawyer is likely pushing for a delay with a judge hoping to pick a trial date in that next hearing.
All right, Garrett Hake, thank you. I'm joined now by senior legal correspondent Laura Jarrett, Chief Justice contributor Jonathan Deanst, and Chief White House correspondent Kristen Walker. Laura, let me start with you. The trial judge wasn't in the courtroom today, but yet you're getting indications that she may want to move quickly with this case. Absolutely, Lester. All signs point to the judge, Tanya Chutkin, looking not to waste any time. The Obama appointee coordinated with the magistrate ahead of today's hearing to make sure to get everyone back in court and fast later this month. And we now know she actually intends to set the trial date at that hearing. As Garrett mentioned, this is the same judge who nearly two years ago said presidents are not kings when she rejected Mr. Trump's attempt to block the January 6th committee from getting her hands on documents from his time in the White House. And she has a history of handing down longer sentences against those on trial for storming the Capitol than even the government asked for, Lester. And Kristen, tell us about the former president. He was really defiant today. He absolutely was, Lester. It's interesting. The judge gave former President Trump the opportunity to appear virtually, but he showed up in person. He spoke out after. It's something he's done after the first two indictments, essentially treating these moments as campaign events. Today, posting, he only needs one more indictment to win the election. And while some of his GOP challengers are taking aim, including his former vice president, Mike Pence, Mr. Trump is still dominating the race. So the big question now, will any of his rivals start to sharpen their tone during the first debate now less than three weeks away? A top Trump aide, Lester, telling me that Mr. Trump still has no plans to attend that first debate, which is just days before the next court trial date. All right, uh, Jonathan, some unanswered questions of this a bit about those uh, unindicted, unnamed co-conspirators. What more have you learned about them? Yeah, Lester, Rudy Giuliani acknowledging he is most likely unindicted co-conspirator one. Giuliani says Donald Trump to this day believes in his heart the election was stolen. John Eastman, another lawyer named as an unindicted co-conspirator. Eastman's lawyers tell me he was acting as a Trump legal advisor. He was throwing out theories and possibilities that needed to be explored that this was in no way a criminal conspiracy. The prosecutors say Mr. Trump knew he lost to Biden because so many Trump officials told him so. This, as a close friend of Donald Trump's, tells me he spoke with the former president this morning. He says Mr. Trump voiced frustration but told him he's confident he will win at court and at the ballot box. Lester. All right, thanks, Donald.